Hi, everyone, and welcome to this chapter. In this chapter, we're going to be talking about inherited widget. If you're familiar with stateful widget, you know that there is a function avail available for you called set state. And by calling the function, your stateful widget and its children can be redrawn. Um, inherited widget takes us to the next level uh, by saying that um, this, the redrawing of these uh, children depend can actually depend on uh, some condition. So whereas you have set state and set state basically goes through uh, the children of a widget and tries to redraw them basically whether they're changed or not, uh, using inherited widget, you can then put that state in the inherited widget and then yourself decide whether the children of your or the child of your inherited widget should actually be redrawn. So it basically takes the control and puts it in one place. We're going to talk about it soon. So let's go ahead and create a project for our uh, chapter as we usually do. So I'm going to bring a terminal window here, adjust the microphone a little bit as well. So it's not in my face. Um, and let's go ahead, I'm gonna do some reshuffling here and let's go and create a new project. So I'm gonna say Flutter, create, stateful app, of course. And I like to just provide an organization here as well. Let's see Pixalty, which is my organization and you can provide another organization if you want to. So let's see how it goes. And let's go in that folder, stateful app course. And I'm going to bring up Visual Studio Code here, OK? I'm going to close the terminal. Thank God we have integrated terminal inside our um, Visual Studio Code. And let's bring up main Dart. And in here, um, what we're going to do soon is to actually going to re restructure this project so that it is to our liking. So before we do that, let's go ahead and create a, um, a Git repository here locally. And I'm just going to say git in it, just like that, OK? Um, and what we're going to do then is to go ahead inside our main function in here and uh, create this material app that you can see here in the main function. Uh, that's usually how I like to structure my applications. And also, we're going to return a scaffold uh, inside our uh, home page, OK? So I'm going to do all of that with a little uh, code snippet that I prefer, prepared from before. It's called FSA, uh, Flutter Scaffold Application. And all that it does, all, all that it does is really, oh, I don't want to profile the application. It just creates this run app with material app, as I mentioned, and it creates a home page. So I've mentioned this actually in another video on how to create snippets for Visual Studio Code, which you're more than welcome to have a look at. It's available on YouTube. But this should be just standard uh, Flutter application for you at this point. So it shouldn't be that difficult to uh, manage. OK, now that we got our code to this point, I'm going to do a select device and iPhone 13 Pro, which is my simulator here. I'm going to run that. And while that is happening, let's go ahead to Terminal and commit this code. And we're going to tag it as well. OK, so let's say git status, git add, bring the code a little bit higher so you see it better. If I can grab it somehow, it's very difficult to actually grab this Visual Studio Code here. I'm going to make it smaller like this. OK, so let's say git add all. And once that is done, I'm just going to say git commit step one. And then we are going to tag it as well as step one. OK, so that's done. And I can see now. Um, that our code is running in the simulator. So I'm going to bring the simulator to the right hand side here, a little bit like that. So I get rid of the bottom. And here's our simulator. OK. And to be honest with you, the simulator could actually be quite small. We don't need it that big. Let's just put it here because we're not displaying like so many visual stuff in this chapter. So I'm going to make the code bigger instead so that it's visible. All right. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to have a look at a basic example of a state. There are going to be two screens involved, actually not screens, two widgets involved in this example. And it's going to be the home page. And then we're going to also have a little text widget. So um, and that text widget is going to be like a custom widget. The goal of this example really is to have a state in our home page. And once that state changes, we want to be able to redraw, for instance, the um, 
text widget. So we're going to dive a little bit deeper inside how state management works and then how we can actually make it better using inherited widget. So let's go ahead and change our homepage to a stateful widget to demonstrate that. So I'm going to change homepage and convert it to a stateful widget just like that. So now it's a stateful widget. And let's go ahead then and add a text property uh, or a title property to our homepage. I'm also going to go into my examples in here and make sure that um, I'm Basically, I can maybe copy paste some code so that we don't have to write everything by hand. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to bring it here. So that's our title property. OK. So what we're also going to do is to go and display this title inside our app bar. As you can see at the moment, it's saying home page because it's written home page here. But we're going to use title instead. So let's go ahead and say title. But it's, it can't be constant anymore. OK because this is a variable. So we can't use the constant constructor of the text widget. So what we're going to do then is to add a little container to the body of our uh, build here, the body of our scaffold. And then we're going to wrap that, <clears throat> excuse me, inside a gesture detector. And um, actually, I don't know why I put gesture detector with just one quotation mark. It should be two. Uh, we're going to add gesture detector, meaning that when you tap on that container, then we're going to update that title. So that's the goal that we're going to achieve in this uh, part of the chapter. So let's go ahead and take care of that. So first, I'm going to put a little uh, body in here. And I'm going to say a container, OK? And with a color of color is white, OK? So that's that part. Then let's wrap it inside a gesture detector like that. So that part is done then. And when we get the tap event of this gesture detector, all we want to do is just to update that title. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go and say on tap. On there's so much documentation we can't even see the code. Uh, on tap. And in here, we're gonna say set state. Okay. And in here, then we're gonna say title is date time now. And we're going to then use perhaps to string or to ISO string better. OK, so we're sending the title. And um, so yeah, actually, let's let's go back one title here. I, I don't want to jump too fast. So what we're doing in here is literally saying that when, when the gesture detector is tapped, update the title and then call set state as well when we're doing this update. So that means that if I tap here, then the title up here changes on the simulator. It's not that important for us to actually see the exact date, to be honest with you, but I can increase it a little bit, maybe the size. So when I tap here, you can see the time changes. OK, so let's put the simulator back where it was. OK, so how is this actually working? How is it that set state is somehow able to redraw the stateful widget. So a lot of people don't really know how set state works. So I thought maybe in this chapter, we could just go a little bit deep into how set state works in a stateful widget. So I'm going to command click on it just like that. And maybe, yeah, I think the size of the window is just ginormous, but maybe that's actually good. So let's have a look at how this is actually working in here. You can see first, it says that ensure that this function is not null. Okay. So you can't just say set state with an empty function. Like, I wonder if you can actually execute it like this. It says one positional argument. So it can't be really null. Um, I wonder if you could actually pass a void callback that is null. Like if I, in here, say uh, final void callback fn is null. Can't happen really. So I don't really know what, what that assert is for. <laughs> could it be that we could say this is an optional? And then we can actually pass it in here, perhaps, like this, maybe. But this is going to, I mean, this is going to crash on itself because it can't unwrap this FN. So I really don't know what the first assert is for. And then there is some code here, uh, which we aren't going to look at. But what we are going to look at is here. You can see set state. What it does is that you pass it a function. And inside that set state function itself is going to call your function and 
it's just going to say is as dynamic. So it could just return anything. However, what's important is that inside set state, this function that you basically have, it cannot have a result of type future, meaning that you cannot do, um, you, you can't have a function that returns an asynchronous computation. So you, if you want to call set state, you need to do your computation before set state asynchronously, asynchronously and then call set state. So that's what this is for. But what I wanted to get to is that, that when you call set state is you will see here, it says underscore element mark needs build. So this is like the internals of how Flutter actually works because you're working with um, widgets and then you're working with elements. You have a widget tree, but Flutter is actually maintaining something that it calls an element tree. And this element tree is kind of somehow like a mapping between what you want according to your widgets and what Flutter kind of understands from your widgets on what should be displayed on the screen. So element tree is kind of like a more raw variant of your widget tree. And in here, it's basically saying that the element that this uh, stateful widget uh, you can see it is actually right here, stateful element. So it says, oh, here it is, stateful element. So this element needs to be rebuilt. So, and perhaps also displayed fresh on the screen. So at the moment, this is working fine. We have a little, um, let's go back to this code that we have before. We have a little title in here. The title is managed by this homepage state. And it is a variable upon which, upon changing which, we can do a redrawing of this uh, widget. However, what happens then if you want to bring this title into another widget? Let's say that you have another widget that needs to be redrawn when this title changes independently. So maybe you don't even want to have a stateful widget. You want to have a stateless stateless widget and then you want to be able to update a title somewhere and that that stateless widget has to be redrawn when that title changes so i mean there's lots and lots we can talk about in here but we're just gonna zoom in now and have a look at one specific example on how to do that so instead of a um using what we're doing at the moment, having a stateful widget in here and having a title and perhaps passing this title along to another widget to display, we could use something called an inherited widget. An inherited widget, it is, um, I mean, you have to have a look at its source code, but it is actually a proxy widget, which comes from widget and internally comes from diagnostable tree or something. I think we can have a look at the class inheritance, but it is a, it is, kind of like it is a widget, but it has a constant constructor. So it, it's not like a state of a stateful widget. So your inherited widget is going to have final fields. You can't really change those fields because then you're breaking this constant idea of the inherited uh, widgets constructor. And it will also give you the ability to basically replace an entire widget tree uh, should that inherited widget actually change? So um, at, the, at this point that you're looking, when we look at stateful widget, you just call set state and it's just a huge function. It literally built, it literally tries to mark your entire widgets element in the element tree as needing to be rebuilt and perhaps reduced, displayed and re-rendered to the user. However, with a an inherited widget, you will have the possibility to compare your current instance of the inherited widget with the previous instance in the widget tree and then dictate to Flutter whether a redraw is necessary. So it gives you more control over the redrawing and how the element tree actually is mapped with the widget tree. So you can think of uh, a an inherited widget as a hybrid of stateless and stateful widget with more control. That's like the best way that I can explain what inherited widget actually is. So let's commit the code that we've done so far. So let's go to terminal and say um, that we want to commit this code. So I'm going to say git add a, and then let's git commit um, step two, okay? And I'm going to tag it as well. I think we tagged the first one as well, didn't we? Yeah, you tag step two. It's always easier to tag because you can jump to tags much easier and you can jump to commits. I mean, you can jump to commits as well if you know exactly where in the commit tree they are. 
Okay, so I've actually explained already what inherited widget is, but it is very useful to hold on to data that descendant widgets then are dependent on. And you can then make the decision where the widget tree has to be redrawn, whether data has changed enough for those widgets to have to be redrawn, okay? So what we're gonna do now in this part of the chapter, we're gonna update our code so that we have a, an inherited widget but internally that inherited widget is going to have a very simple class that we're going to call API. And this API class is a very simple class that holds on to some string and it is going to export a, or it is going to basically expose a future string function that grabs the current date and time, but with a little delay. So, it's just a mock API class. It's just to explain the concept of inherited widget and how we can actually hold on to state. Okay, so it's nothing complicated, so to say. So um, the result of this is going to be um, an application that has the ability for the user to tap on the screen and tapping on the screen is then gonna go to that fake API class, extract a date and time, and then update both the title of our homepage and also the text of a completely independent widget in this homepage. And they're not like passing data to each other. So that's the key. So we're going to bring this little title in here at the moment. It's embedded inside homepage. Bring it one step up into this inherited widget and inherited widget is then internally going to talk with some sort of an API. So this is going to demonstrate how you can share state and how you can share data between different widgets and have some sort of like a provider inherited widget that sits on top of them. This is like a very typical case of sharing information between different widgets in Flutter. So I think it's very important to actually understand how it works. So what we're going to do is going to start by creating a little um, API. I'm going to go to my notes as well and see if I can paste something in here so that we can save some time. So, and we have some API. Okay. So let's go ahead and create a little API class in here. And let's say class API. And as you can see at the bottom of the screen, we're going to create a little string date and time, which is optional. So uh, the string, uh, oh, <laughs> TypeScript. Uh, okay. I don't know really what I'm doing sometimes, like whether I have to have optional here, uh, optional there. I sometimes get confused by it. So because different languages do it in different ways. So let's see then what we can do in our API class. So as I said, this is a very, I mean, it's a fake API class. It's not going to do any asynchronous work in the terms of actually making an API call. But what it is going to do is going to expose this function for us. I'm going to copy its signature, paste it here so I don't have to type it again. And then what it's going to do is uh, it's going to fake an API call and wait one second. And upon that one second uh, passing, it's just going to grab the current date and time, assign it to this date and time, and also return that. Okay. So let's start by saying return future delayed. And we're going to say const duration seconds one. So this is our wait. And in here, which is basically it is an empty function actually. So we're then going to get um, the current date and time. Okay. So let's say date time now, and we're going to say to ISO string. Okay. And then we're going to use the then clause in here and assign the result to this date and time as well so that we don't lose it. Okay. So then, and let's say date and time. The actually, because I don't want a shadow, so let's just say value. That's fine. So let's then say uh, date and time is equal to value and then return value just like that. Okay. So what we're doing here is really just faking a one second delay upon that one second elapsing. We're saying that the value returned from this future should actually be date and time in the ISO format. And then we're going to assign the result also to date and time as soon as it comes and then return the result. So that's very simple. Okay. 
So what we then need is now that we have the API, we need to create this little provider class, which in our case, in this example, is going to be an inherited widget. So what we need also is to have a little way here that can dictate to Flutter whether our inherited widget actually has completely been replaced or it is the same inherited widget because Flutter needs to understand whether an inherited widget's changes should affect its children. And for that, it is going to call a special function, as you'll soon see, and it's going to say, hey, this is the previous inherited widget of your type, and you know who you are. Have you changed enough for your children or for your child to have to be rebuilt? So we need a way to basically tell that to Flutter. And a good way for me usually is to have some sort of an ID in my inherited widget. Because remember, inherited widget is not a stateful widget. A stateful widget can have set state. It can have variables. But an inherited widget is a constant. It cannot change. You have to replace the whole inherited widget for Flutter to actually say, hey, uh, I, I see you've replaced yourself. Do you want your children to be redrawn? OK, so keep that in mind. Inherited widget needs to somehow sometimes actually um, be used using a, a stateful widget simply because an inherited widget doesn't have variable properties. So we need uh, to have some sort of an ID for our inherited widget. And for that, I prefer to use UUID. So let's go ahead in our terminal here and bring UUID here. So I'm going to say flutter, uh, flutter pop add UUID, which is going to drag in the UUID package. And let's then go and import UUID in here. So import package uh, and then UUID, UUID Dart, OK? OK. So let's go ahead and create this little provider class. As I said, this provider class is going to wrap itself around that API class that we've written. So. And you'll be thinking then, OK, but where is it actually going to be inserted? This provider class, I mean, what is it? As I said, it's an inherited widget. An inherited widget comes from a proxy widget, which in turn is a widget. So it actually is a widget. You can place it inside your widget tree. So, and the way we're going to do it is that we're going to create this API provider and put it here, like literally wrap our material app or maybe even the home page with that provider. So it is going to insert itself in the widget tree. So as you can see in here, this API provider will wrap our home page. It will be available to all its descendants. So this is an important information. Now I'm going to jump back to this section that I was just talking about. So let's go ahead and actually create this API provider. So let's just say class API provider extends inherited widget. OK, just like that. So this class, it, it will need some information. It will need actually some uh, API uh, to hold on to. And I'm going to then jump into this and add those fields. So let's say this API provider has an instance of the actual API. So let's say final API API like that. And then we're also going to say final string UUID. So this is like its ID and this is the API that it holds on to. Okay. I'm going to get help from Visual Studio Code to add a constructor for these final fields like that. And actually, let's add in the key as well, like this. And we're going to make this, um, these. The key should be there, but these should be required fields. OK, required, and then required here as well. And then in here, we actually have to call super. OK, so let's say in here, we first create our UUID. So we say UUID is equal to UUID libraries uh, or class v4. And I believe this is actually a constant constructor. And after that, we're going to call super. and we have the key and we have a child. So we also have to grab a child in here, actually. So sorry, UID shouldn't be as a parameter in here. So we just say require widget child, OK? And we pass the child in here. So now we got that constructor working. So it's a little bit 
weird looking, but it is. It takes this key, which could be a value or a global key, whatever you want, and then it has a it has a, a dependency on API which you have to provide, and it will have a child which it has to pass to a super. So as I said, a an inherited widget actually is, as you can see, is a proxy widget which in itself is a widget, which is a diagnosable tree something, diagnosable tree. Yeah, and that comes from diagnose, diagnose the supple. <laughs> and that's a mix. And so it is quite a long hierarchy. So, okay, we've done that part. So as you can see, we have a little error here, and that is something that we have to implement. And it's saying missing concrete implementation of inherited widget update should notify. So, and that's what we're going to talk about here. I'm going to add that missing function in here. And here we have to return true or false. As I mentioned before, this update should notify. Us. It's documentation is pretty good. It says whether the, the framework should notify widgets that inherit from this widget. But it kind of means that at some point, the framework, the Flutter framework understands that, okay, you've changed like you, this whole API provider has changed. It has become a new instance, and then it will hold on to this old instance that is about to be replaced, and it will pass it to your new instance. It says, hey, this was what you were before, and you know what you are now. You have your own state. Do I need to replace your child? Do I need to redraw your child? So in here, you need to basically go to this covariant and say that, well, this instance is this API provider. We know who that is. And then in here, you kind of have to make this decision. Am I a new instance or has anything changed in me? And the way for us to know that is to using this UUID. So let's go in here and say we return. If our UUID is not equal to this old widgets UUID, then the child has to be redrawn. Okay, so now that we have this provider, and I, as I mentioned, this provider is going to be inserted in the widget tree and it has access to this API. And remember, we are gonna, the child of this API provider is gonna be our homepage. So anything inside our homepage is going to want to have access to this API provider, but we have no singleton, no way of our, in like our dependence inside homepage, for instance, the app bar or this widget that we're gonna develop to grab a hold of this API provider. There is a function in Flutter that is, I believe it is called, let's actually see, it's called depend on inherited widget of exact type. So it is actually quite a lengthy word and I prefer not to use it so often. It's just because it's so lengthy and it makes the code looking kind of cryptic. So what we want is for dependence to get an instance of our API provider and a very well known pattern inside Flutter itself, which Flutter uses itself, is to export a little function called of. And you've probably seen this of function here and there, but you usually use of just to, for instance, grab uh, a specific widget that is inside this tree. Or if you're working with some sort of like a theme manager, you can say theme manager of this context. So, and you should probably now know that the of functions that these different libraries and packages provide to you are working with the widget tree. So they're usually using like the build context to traverse the build context and go higher up in the context and grab, for instance, a widget, an inherited widget, for instance. So we're going to do the same. We're going to give the ability for our child, which in this case is going to be the home page, and all its descendants to grab a copy of this API provider using a very simple API. So let's go ahead and say static. So static, and we're going to say this, the result of this static function is going to be API provider, and its name is off. And what we need is a build context. Build context, and we're going to say context. Okay. And in here, we're going to say return context dependent on inherited widget of exact type API provider like that, okay? And this is an optional, so we have to unwrap it just like that, all right? So now we have this little off function on our API provider as well. So let's go ahead and inject this API provider inside 
the run app inside our main function. So we're going to wrap this home page with our API provider. So I'm going to say wrap with widget and I'm going to say API provider. Okay. Just like that. And it says the name parameter API is required because we have to construct an instance of API and pass it in here. And the, uh, I mean, the convention in Flutter is that the child has to be just the last parameter has to be, has to be, but it's like, is recommended. So we say API first, and it's an instance of our API class. And then it has a child, which is our home page. Remember, now we're changing the main function. And for that, you have to do a hot restart. Hot reload won't do it because the main function is not going to be affected by a hot reload. So to demonstrate how this API provider is useful for us, we're not just going to be dependent on a home page, but we're actually going to be dependent also on a home page that displays a completely separate widget. So we're going to put that widget as its own class. And inside that class, you will then see that you will have access to the API provider so long as its parent was inside a widget tree where API provider was available. So as you can see here, API provider is creating an instance of home page and any descendant of home page is then going to by default have access to our API provider. So let's go ahead and create that little class that we just talked about. We're going to go right after home page and start writing the code for that. So we're going to call it a date time widget. It's going to be a stateless widget, STL, Flutter stateless widget, date time widget. So, and in here, then we're going to get access to our little uh, API provider. So let's say in here, a final API is going to be our um, API provider of context, right? This gets our API provider, and then we're going to get access to its API. So just like that. And then we're going to return a text in here. And the text is going to be API date and time or tap on, on the screen to fetch date and time. So how this really works is that date and time inside the API of our API provider is an optional value if you remember here. If it's not present, then we're gonna grab this string instead and display it inside this date time widget, okay? So we've already taken care of this title, which I should have shown this title a little bit earlier, perhaps. So it's, I mean, this is all great, but we also need a way to set that date and time or kind of like ask the API provider to grab that date and time for us. So, um, and once that date and time here changes, we kind of want to tell our date time widget to redraw itself. And you probably have seen this key quite a lot in Flutter and you may have not even recognized, like you may have not even used it before and you may not know how it works, but this key is kind of like a, an ID for your widget. It's, it's a way for your widget to understand, am I the same widget? Do I have to be redrawn? And that's what we're going to capitalize on in this chapter. And we're going to create a little value key, which is then going to be equal to this little string in here, date and time. And should that value key then change, then we're going to take and ask this date time widget to redraw itself. So let's go ahead and add a little value key to our home page state here. And let's say value key and text key, and that is going to be equal to const value key. And let's say that is going to be of type string optional. And its default value is just going to be null to begin with. Because remember, in the beginning, we have no date and time, and that value is null. All right? Great. So now that we have that, uh, we're going to go and update the title of our app bar. So let's go in here and remove this little title here. OK? And in this text, we're going to grab the title from our API provider. So I'm going to say, uh, it is equal to a text of API provider of context, okay? API date and time, otherwise empty. So it kind of looks like this. So this is the code that I just wrote, API provider of context, API date and time. So we're going to our API provider, which is available in this context simply because homepage was created. Remember, 
inside this main function uh, inside run app. And it was wrapped with the API provider. Homepage is the child of API provider. And this is the way that we're grabbing the hold of the parent. Okay. So tapping on this container now shouldn't just set uh, the title directly. What we're going to do in here is actually go to our API provider and ask it to grab a new date and time. So let's say final and um, API is API provider of our context, okay? And we're gonna say, we're gonna change this set state to an async function because we're going to um, actually maybe not set state async. Let's make the tap async, okay? And then do this in outside set state. Then we're gonna say final and time and date is API. Uh, and here it should also be API. It shouldn't be there. <laughs> so we're going to say API date and time uh, and actually say await get date and time, just like that. So now we get the maybe change this to date and time as well, like this. All right. So now we're awaiting on the API of our provider to grab a new date and time, and we're placing it inside this date and time. OK. Then what we need to do is to um, as soon as we get this date and time, we kind of have to update this text key. Updating the text key will then signal to our date time widget to update itself. So let's go ahead and put this set state back in here. And in here, we're going to say text key is a value key of this date and time. All right. So upon you doing this, you're setting a new value to the text key. Flutter is going to then mark the element uh, for uh, our homepage stateful widget in the element tree as needing to be rebuilt. Then the rebuild happens, the text key is changed. Anything dependent on the text key will then be rebuilt, which is our date time widget since that value has changed. So let's have a look at a little demo in here. So I'm going to press Command S to hot reload and perhaps actually to hot restart the application as well. So you can see when we, uh, when I'll do a hot restart here, you can see that the title in the beginning is empty. And that is because we wrote this little code in here. Actually, it's the value of the field. What does it say? The value of the field isn't used. Oh, we haven't really passed it. Oh, that was, that was not good. So we have to pass that in here in the key. So let's say we will wrap this actually with size box expanded. And in the container, we're going to say it has a little child. And the child is date time widget. And its key is going to be this value, or what do we call it, text key. Okay. Oh, sorry about that. We, we should have implemented that before. So I'm then going to do a hot restart. So you can see it says tap on screen to fetch date and time. And there is no title at the moment because we wrote this little code in here. It said API provider of context, API date and time. And that's null. There is no date and time to begin with. It's just this one. Someone has to call this function. And that's what we're doing inside our tap event here. You see, date and time, await, get date and time. And that then internally is going to go and set that date and time and grab its value. Okay, so let's tap here. It's going to wait one second. And then it's going to update both the title and it's also going to update this date time widget. So tap one more time and you can see both are updated independently. So as you can see here, we didn't really set the title. We didn't say anywhere that here's the title, except we just said set states. But internally, there's a lot happening. And that's because we're saying get date and time and uh, we're then saying set state. And you can see that this date, get date and time actually is going to then be stored inside our API, as you saw right here, date and time. And that's why the title is updating. And the reason that this thing is updating is because of the key, because inside set state, we're actually updating that text key, which then signals to the element tree saying that that widget needs to be uh, rebuilt. So 
let's then wrap things up a little bit here now if, for this chapter, now that we've talked quite a lot about inherited widget. I just want to wrap it up. Inherited widget, as I mentioned, in I think it was at the beginning of this chapter, inherited widget is immutable. Uh, I think it's actually a good idea that we have a look at the reason why it's immutable. If you look at inherited widget, you will see that it has a constant constructor. That's how you have to create your inherited widgets. You have to call that constant constructor and pass it a key and a child. So all your fields kind of have to be final in here. And the way to <clears throat> replace an inherited widget is actually do a rebuild of it. And that's where you will get the chance to notify your children in the elementary to see whether they need to be updated as well or not. So you be <clears throat> you may be wondering, excuse me, you may be wondering, okay, how if the inherited widget is constant, how am I supposed to actually replace it? And a way to do that would actually be wrapping your inherited widget in some sort of a, a stateful widget, which is kind of like doing like right, eating your sandwich kind of like this. Uh, you're creating a constant uh, provider for the rest of your widget tree, and you have to wrap that inside an inherited inside a stateful widget so that you can actually update it. And there are a lot of other ways of doing it. And there are so many packages out there, which we're going to talk about in this course, which do things, they kind of accomplish the same thing, not kind of actually, they accomplish the same thing, but they do it in a, in a lot nicer way and in a lot more isolated way. So uh, let's commit our code uh, and tag it perhaps. So let's see, git add all and git commit step three. Okay. And I'm going to tag the code as step three as well. Great. Um, one more thing that we need to talk about also before we wrap this chapter up is that replacing inherited widget redraws all children. So um, if you replace your inherited widget and then in here, update should notify says true that yes, I, ha I actually have to redraw my children. It redraws all the children. So if your inherited widget is sitting high up in the hierarchy, for instance, in this case, inherited widget is literally wrapping the entire application, you could say. It's, it's using the homepage. And it's in there. And if API provider, for some reason, notifies, says that, yeah, my children have to be redrawn, then every child in the entire widget tree will get then redrawn and rebuilt kind of. So there is a better way of doing that. And uh, we will actually talk about that in one of the upcoming chapters. I don't know if it's going to be the exact chapter after this, perhaps, but uh, we will talk about that. Uh, how we can avoid ha rebuilding the entire widget tree when something changes a little bit higher up, okay? And that is going to be uh, the basically inherited model, uh, as you can see here. So inherited widget is kind of like a little bit of a, yeah, less advanced version of a class that we can use called inherited model. And we will talk about that in one of the upcoming chapters. So I hope you enjoyed this chapter and I'll see you in the next one.